The Carnot engine is the most efficient heat engine. According to the second law of thermodynamics, no heat engine, including a Carnot engine, can have 100% efficiency. As shown on the diagram to the right, no heat can be lost to the cold reservoir in a 100% efficient engine, and this is impossible. This would violate the second law of thermodynamics. Let's look at that a little bit more detail by turning to page 12 of your notes. You will see that a, another form of the second law of thermodynamics states that no cyclical process can convert heat into work entirely. That means that if the work was exactly equal to the input heat, then your efficiency would be equal to 1. And this is impossible. It is impossible to have a 100% efficient engine. The work done must be less than the input heat. So you might be asking, well, if it can't be 100% efficient, the maximum possible efficiency, then what is the maximum possible efficiency of a heat engine? Well, it was Sadie Carnot, the French engineer, who developed the hypothetical idealized heat engine. And we named this cycle in honor of him called the Carnot cycle, as you can see in the diagram over here. The Carnot cycle consists of four reversible processes, two isothermal expansions, A to B and C to D, and two adiabatic processes, B to C and D to A. And this is a complete cycle, as you can see, as it goes from A to B to C to D back to A. Now I'll show you an animation for this process. The Carnot cycle that you just saw operates between two heat reservoirs at temperatures TH and TC and only uses reversible processes. A reversible process, or sometimes called an equilibrium process, is a process in which the direction can be reversed by infinitesimal change of the conditions of the process. Imagine in a PV diagram you have an isothermal expansion from A to B. Then if this process were reversible, then it would follow an equilibrium path that could be retraced from B to A. A reversible process is an idealized process that can't never really be attained precisely in the real world. If you go back to page 12 of our notes, and recall our ice cube example where the ice melted into this puddle of water. This process was known to be a natural process where it spontaneously went from ice to water because heat flowed from the outside environment into the ice and caused it to melt. Typically processes such as this in nature are irreversible. For example, if you were to rub your hands vigorously, then the work done is converted into heat. And this process is also irreversible. There are more detailed notes found on page 11 of your notes on the reversible process and these two statements that we've been discussing of the second law of thermodynamics. But let's go back to the Carnot cycle. The Carnot cycle contains four of these reversible processes, two isothermal expansion and compression, and two adiabatic compression and expansion as well. The cycle operates between two temperatures, TH and T cold, or TL for T low. And no real engine that is operating between these two temperatures, TH and T cold, can be ever more efficient than the Carnot engine. The theoretical maximum efficiency, or Carnot efficiency, really only depends on the absolute temperatures of the two reservoirs at the hot and the cold reservoir. And it's given by this equation here that's on your AP formula sheet. The uh, details of the proof of this equation are left out of the notes and in this discussion because they're a bit involved. So we'll just simply state this equation and hopefully you'll trust me. It turns out that the ratio of the heat output and the heat input is also equal to the ratio of the cold reservoir to the hot reservoir temperatures in Kelvin. 
So remember that no heat engine operating between reservoirs of temperatures TH and TC can be more efficient than this perfectly reversible engine called the Carnot engine operating between these temperatures. So this is the theoretical maximum efficiency. Sometimes we'll put a little C beside this E to represent that Carnot efficiency as the theoretical maximum efficiency. And hopefully you'll note that when you see that the temperature difference is quite large in Kelvin, then you'll have a more efficient engine. Furthermore, the Carnot efficiency could never ever be equal to 1 or 100% unless the temperature in the cold reservoir were to approach 0 Kelvin, which is impossible. Okay, you should now be ready to tackle on some Carnot engine type problems.